good evening everyone uh, thank you for taking out your time this evening really appreciate that uh, my name is tosif and i'm a part of federation of indian animal protection organizations uh, just a little bit about fiapo uh, fiapo is india's apex animal rights organization and a collective voice of the animal rights movement in india uh, protecting the rights and interests of animals at uh, local and also at uh, national levels uh, fiapo is also india's only federation with uh, more than 170 members uh, you know spanning its presence over 90 cities Uh, so I welcome you all today to this webinar on how to write an annual report that raises funds for your cause. Uh, I'm sure everyone is looking forward to this session and uh, you know to understand some of the important things that we should be aware of. You know while we prepare our annual report. Uh, today we are very delighted to have uh, the CEO of FIAPO, Harthi Ramchandran, uh, with us as our eminent speaker for this session. Uh, so allow me to introduce Abharti uh, to all of you. Uh, so Abharti Ramchandran is the CEO of FIAPO and she is a communications and fundraising professional with 26 years of experience of which uh, two decades have been in the non-profit sector she works with non-profits to effectively tell their stories uh, raise funds and you know change policy and attitudes uh, she founded and ran barapani a strategic consulting firm and a design agency for the non-profits uh, she is also an international keynote speaker and masterclass trainer on resource mobilization and communication Uh, she has worked with 300 plus organizations across uh, uh, asia and africa uh, so welcome to the session party we are really happy uh, you know very glad to have you with us uh, with so many years of experience and you know, expertise in this particular field we really look forward to this session and you know gain some valuable insights uh, so before we move on i'll just make a quick announcements regarding the webinar so uh, i request all uh, members all the participants to feel you know feel free to share all your questions in the uh, q and a icon uh, you know below on the screen and uh, you may also share them on the chat option as well so it's up to you uh, and we shall be getting back to bharti for the uh, q and a's towards the end of the session uh, and lastly we will share a feedback form uh, in the chat box so i request everyone to fill it up uh, your suggestions are really important to us so yeah without taking any more time uh, i shall be handing over the session so yeah over to you bharti thank you so much thank you tosif uh, thanks so much uh, for your very kind words thank you everyone else who's uh, here for the webinar uh, it's friday evening so we specially appreciate you spending this time with us i'm just going to take a minute uh, or less than that to share my screen so is that visible to everyone yes yes and uh, also i'm audible right okay fantastic so um annual reports are um, of course they are statutory we all all nonprofits need to produce an annual report but uh, the annual report that we're going to talk about in this session in particular is uh, a very different one uh, it's not um, you know the manuscript thick bound annual reports that we are used to seeing but really an annual report that's meant for donors and uh, one that raises money for your cause so let's find out how to write an annual report that does just that okay so this is uh, i think this also has been part of the whole um, you must have seen this agenda but we'll go through it fairly quickly um the first thing is why do you need an annual report and usually like i said people think that it's because it's statutory and you need to produce an annual report and donors ask for an annual report but primarily an annual report is a communication device and it is the one place where you can tell your owner uh, your donors how effective your work has been the second thing that an annual report does is it builds credibility so uh, it builds credibility much much more than any other communication device that your organization can have so for example if you have a little bit of money and you want to spend it on uh, anything at all rather than produce a brochure or anything else i would suggest produce an annual report it's that important because this is where you talk about achievements and this is where you talk about how you used your money that you received from donors so in that sense it's a huge credibility builder the third thing that an annual report does and this is something that not many people use it for is to raise money and uh, you know it's it just makes sense Uh, the first role of the annual report is to communicate effectively so you've told your donors 
how well you have implemented programs to uh, protect animals. The second, you've established credibility, how effectively you've used the money that they have donated. And in a sense, you've primed them to a point that they are ready to give you more money. So therefore, an annual report is also the place where you can ask for money uh, and you can raise funds. Uh, so these are the three things. Um, I want to, uh, this is not a story uh, that comes from the animal protection sector, but uh, this is just a story of an annual report that stands alone. Uh, this was almost, uh, you know, 20 years ago when I first started working on annual reports and uh, we used to do workshops on annual reports and there was somebody who, uh, uh, Reggie George, who runs uh, an NGO, a hospital in a, in a tribal area in Tamil Nadu. And he came to us and he said that uh, I have very little money and I just want to produce one thing that will raise money for us. Uh, should I do a brochure? So we said, no, produce an annual report. So he made a four page annual report. And by that, I just mean by four pages, it was just, you know, you have this A4 sheet, right? Which is, it goes into the printer and you just fold it in half. And this was it, a four page annual report. He just printed 500 copies of this annual report. And uh, this annual report raised him two and a half lakhs. And that was the starting point of this organization. This organization was very, very dependent on grant funding. Uh, but as you know, 20 years ago, a lot of things started to change in grant funding. And uh, this annual report was the first public donation money that he had raised. And uh, from an organization that was almost 100% dependent on um, on grant money, they moved the hospital to a point where it was raising much more donations than it was raising grant money. Uh, so the percentage, uh, their income started to diversify with one communication tool and that's the annual report. So I wanted to tell you the story to sort of um, reinforce how important uh, the annual report's role can be. So when we produce an annual report, who do we send it to? Who are the people that we need to give it to? Now, usually what we do is we give it to all our donors, most certainly the institutional donors, sometimes our major donors. Um, but what I would suggest is that you actually need to, you know, if you have a, um, the, just the way that you make a list, you need to make a list of each and every person that almost that you need to send the annual report to. It's that important, the planning. Um, you can send it to individuals, a whole range of them, trustees, members, volunteers, staff, um, activists, all your don individual donors, all supporting professionals, any consultants who work with you, um, media persons, uh, individuals in the government at various levels of government that you're in touch with, any researchers that you are either already in touch with or you want to be in touch with, you can send them your annual report. It's a great way to open conversations, saying that here's what we've done in the last year and I would like to have a chat with you. Um, you can send it to opinion makers, uh, well-wishers, the works. Uh, in fact, uh, if you have a shelter and uh, you have people visiting, uh, it's a great idea to have a tiny annual report that you can hand out. How can we make a tiny annual report that's affordable? We'll, we'll see. So of course, you, it goes to all individuals, it goes to institutions, all your network members, peer NGOs, other NGOs that you partner with, uh, Rotary, Lions Club, colleges, schools, uh, community organizations that you work with, grant making agencies, everyone, no one gets left out. Um, you send it to companies, not just any company that you raise funds from already, but send it to people that you want to raise funds uh, from any company. And by company, I don't just mean large national and multinational companies. This could be the shop down the road, literally. It could be your bank where you have your account. And the reason I'm saying this, that a lot of the annual reports that uh, I have produced for organization, um, the printing um, has been entirely sponsored by the bank in which they held their account. So, uh, you know, it's a great way to even raise funds. You can raise funds with the annual report for next year's annual report. So it's that effective. Um, you can send it to shops, restaurants, 
um, who are wherever you want to strike any kind of a partnership with, of course, the government. And uh, I, I would therefore say, I just want to dwell here for a bit and I would actually say, open up an Excel and put down these categories and make a list of numbers, get an idea and get, a, get an idea of how many you're going to send digitally, how many you're going to send uh, in print. And uh, if you need to print, um, print annual reports are great, especially for future donors and who might want to give you large amounts of money if it's a good enough, if it's a well-written brief annual report that somebody can read on, um, you know, while sitting in the car or while traveling in the metro or while on a flight, uh, an annual report really needs to be able to do that for you. So before you start, there are, uh, you know, some things that we need to consider. Um, so there's a lot of planning to be done even before you start to write your annual report. The first thing to consider is where is your target audience? So for example, the people that you want to reach out to, what medium are they most comfortable in? So sometimes as nonprofits, what we tend to do is we start by assuming that, okay, we'll send them a PDF or we say, okay, we'll send them uh, a print annual report. But where, how is your target audience most likely to read the report? Will they read it online? Are they on social media? If on social media, are they on Instagram? Should you do an Instagram annual report? Uh, I know one organization that opened up a new Instagram account uh, for every year of its annual report. So it said on Instagram, it just said annual report 2016. And all the photographs were really, all the posts on Insta were the annual report of the organization. So it all depends on, um, you know, now there are different ways of doing things. So we don't have to stick to just one way. And in fact, if you produce one solid version um, of a print annual report, you can, you can then change that format. You can take parts of it and post it online on social media so that people can see the annual report. If you do want to print it, then get an idea of how much you, uh, how many copies you want to print before you start even writing the annual report. The second very important thing that I would like to say is that an annual report is not meant to be an exhaustive uh, account of everything that you did in the previous year. Uh, an annual report, of course, it limits by the very description, it limits the, uh, the time frame that you're talking about. It is the previous financial year that we're talking about. But we don't have to talk about everything that has happened in that financial year. Every workshop that you've held, every uh, you know, campaign that you've done, it doesn't have to talk about each thing because then it will just become a very, very bulky manuscript-like document. Uh, the idea is to be illustrative. So if you have done one workshop that has really been innovative and you've reached out to say, so let's say that uh, you did a workshop with college students and that was the first of its kind because uh, you know we had this experience in Piapo uh, a couple of weeks ago where we did a workshop and uh, the, the, the college students after the workshop decided to uh, start um, an animal rights group within the campus. So if you have something like that happening, which is a one-off and it's uh, illustrative of the kind that you've done, kind of work that you've done and the kind of work that you want to do in the future, then pick. So you have to first gather all the material from the previous year, but you have to cherry pick. You have to pick the best aspects that together illustrate your work. So it's not about um, you know, usually what happens is when we have different programs and different themes, then every, every theme, every team, uh, team and team wants uh, their work to be represented. But uh, if we sort of uh, put everything, then the person who gets shortchanged is the reader or the donor in this case, because then they, um, uh, then they end up with a, a really large report that's unreadable. So pick your achievements from the previous year. And together, finally, when you pick everything and you look at it, together it should tell the story of the work that you did in the previous year. 
um, find a theme for the whole year. And I'm going to illustrate this with some examples um, that we will see. And don't worry, there's like uh, lots of examples that illustrate all of this. But, uh, the, um, uh, but what I mean by a theme is that you may have decided to start um, work on a new area, or maybe it is a focus area for the next year. Um, for example, you might might have started a campaign on vegan advocacy, or you might have started a campaign on working with elephants in captivity. Um, and that might be, you might want to send your donors the message that this is something we are really focusing on, and therefore we want to raise money for this. Um, or you might pick an achievement that's been very big in the previous year, your biggest achievement that can become the theme. So what is the one thing that stood out for you in the previous year? So pick that thing out and write it in the form of a theme that ties the entire annual report together. Uh, I'll show you an example very, very soon. Um, also, decide the number of pages that your annual report should have before you uh, start writing. Usually what we do is we tell each team to write their report and send it to us. And before we know it, we have 7,565 pages of content, and then we have to reduce it to whatever, right? So instead of doing that, plan the real estate first. Say that I'm going to produce so many pages and the optimum size, in my opinion, um, is an eight pager, an annual eight page annual report. That's optimum. It can be read on a flight. It can be read in a car journey. It can be read while you're waiting for a bus even, you know, so that's optimum. Uh, if you can do four, fantastic. I will show you even smaller reports later on. Um, the maximum I would say is 16. Uh, do not exceed 16 because, uh, you know, otherwise um, the more pages you add, the fewer readers you have. So you, with every page you have add, you lose, I don't know, 100 readers. I just made up that statistic right now, but um, it's not far from the truth, which is that uh, you really have to keep your pages to about 16. Um, the last is uh, really something that I believe in, which is that when we start to write annual reports, the very term annual report doesn't inspire passion in us, right? Um, but it should, because an annual report is really the story of uh, your most inspired moments from the previous year. So we need to write our report with passion. If we don't write our annual report with passion, then uh, our reader is not going to read it with that passion. But if we write it with a lot of passion in the tone, our words, the photographs that we use, the headlines that we use, if we write it with a lot of passion, then the reader will be able to sense that passion. And the donor's mind works like this, that these people really love what they do. These people really love dogs. These people really love animals. That needs to come through, and especially for a labor of love. You know, all of us here are doing are doing what we do because we love it, and uh, that love needs to come through in your annual report. The annual report cannot be like uh, our interventions in the past year were. You know, it can't be like that. It has to be exciting. It has to be passionate. So that's really the last thing. Uh, that these are the five things. So to do before you start. This is uh, some examples of themes. Um, we will have examples from Animal Protection Organization annual reports, but I just wanted to show you how themes can be used to tie together an entire annual report. For example, this one on the right, it says lives you helped change this year. The moment you read that, you know that it is going to be an annual report full of stories because it focuses on lives, lives that the donor helped changed. So it, it's not saying what we did. It, the focus is not on the organization. The focus is not on um, me or my organization. The focus is on you, the donor, and that the theme captures admirably. 
the second annual report is Adhyam that I wanted to show, which is which works on sustainable water. And their theme for this uh, annual report was, this was their uh, 10, 10 year, 10th year anniversary. So they decided to make their annual report 10 years of safe, sustainable water for all. So if it's a landmark year, then you could actually uh, make that the theme, for example. Uh, sometimes there, there are organizations that work on emergencies. And I really find this very, very key, clever, the one with the bicycle, uh, where there was nothing extraordinary that happened. The, uh, the most extraordinary thing was everything was normal. And that itself is a theme, you know, and a, a year of extraordinary normalcy made possible by you. Uh, we were able to care for, you know, everything that we needed to care for. We didn't run short of money. We were uh, able to support all our partners. Uh, so nothing went wrong. And it was a year of extraordinary normal normalcy made possible by you, the donor. So uh, you can actually be clever, uh, not gimmicky. There's like a fine line between cleverness and being gimmicky, but there is, um, so you can actually be clever and find a theme. The idea is to try and make people open the annual report. Usually, you know, when we come across an annual report, we always intend to read it unless you're an annual report uh, a fan like I am. But uh, other than that, you know, most people intend to read the annual report, but they put it on their table and they say, oh, I'll read it later and I'll read it later. Or it's stored at a, as a PDF in their mail. They say, I'll read this later. Uh, the, our idea is to make that cover page irresistible uh, through the theme that we choose so that people can jump right in. So we now come to what goes into the annual report. We've, we've talked about what we should do before, but what goes into the annual report? Um, so the first uh, thing is that an annual report is an achievement report. It is a report of achievements and not of activities. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, the activities that we do, um, they are activities that the organization does. Achievements are the impact that it has, our work has had on the lives of stray dogs, captive elephants, circus animals. So when we talk about our activities, we are talking, we are donning the hat of, uh, we are really looking at life through the um, lens of me, the organization. But when we talk about achievements, we are looking at our work in terms of how is it changing the lives of the animals that we work with. So it's a very subtle difference, but even in the sheer way that we write it, and, and uh, an activity report can be transformed into an achievement report. Let's look at some examples. So for example, this, I think this is HSI's uh, 2020 annual report. Um, if you see the right on the cover, uh, it doesn't say HSI's uh, achievements. It's really uh, achievements for animals. So making it very clear that this report is not about the work that we did, but really the impact that the work that we did had on the lives of animals. Um, and this is like a screenshot from one of the pages. So here where they talk about various um, achievements of theirs. So let's take it in the form of an example and uh, let's, let's see what the difference is. For example, we might say, um, we conducted six workshops in schools, introducing a total of 150 school children to compassion and animal rights. On the left-hand side, the way that it's written is talking about an activity that the organization did. You can rewrite the same sentence saying 150 school children in six schools are now more aware of animal rights and on how to lead a compassionate lifestyle. It's a very small difference, but it's a big difference when a donor reads it um, because then the the subject is not the organization. The subject is not your organization and what it does, but the subject is, it puts the donor directly in 
touch with the thing for which the donor gives money, which is that the people who are affected, the animals that are affected by your work. So if we can uh, start to rewrite uh, words, uh, rewrite our reports, um, instead of making it sound like work that we have done, make it sound like the impact that it has had on people. I think that point has been like, well, sort of that's gone on for a bit longer than I would have liked. The second thing that I would like to say in the writing of the report, and this is very, very important, please avoid jargon and write the way that you would speak. Uh, conversational reports are much, much more readable than uh, reports that use long words, big words, jargon, or words that are only known to the secret community of animal protection organizations. So for example, there's one example on the left, it says, you know, you can read it, our interventions aim to strengthen linkages and referral systems for veterinary care facilities. You've lost me at word four over there, you know, but on the right hand side, you just say, we help sick and injured animals find veterinary care. How do we do this? We, you can even split that that up into two sentences to make it even simpler. We help sick and injured animals find veterinary care. How do we do this? Through our network of shelters, activists, and community caregivers. At just one glance, we can see both say the same thing, but they say it in such a different way. So uh, try and write your reports the way that you would talk to somebody. So I have this um, you know, um, rule that if if something I write is not understandable to my 80 year old grandmother or my five year old daughter, then it's not a good enough sentence. It should be rewritten then. Um, but that might be a bit extreme, but you can follow the middle path here. Um, so look at the importance of achievement. This is from the Dogs Trust annual report. And uh, this is their 2020 annual report. And here they just used achievements, that is numbers. Dogs, so many dogs successfully rehomed. So many dogs were, and they have sort of done an infographic around the achievement. So this is how important achievements are in an annual report. This is uh, Animal Aid Unlimited, and uh, they write delightful uh, material and Animal Aid Unlimited has look look at the stress on numbers. We admitted eleven thousand one eighty two animals into our hospital for treatment, of which so many were dogs, so many were cows and bulls, uh, and every animal has now been vaccinated against rabies. So um, there is a way to even rewrite this in a way that is better. Um, and uh, so this is like a surprise uh, quiz. You don't have, have to answer this, but you can keep this in mind and you can answer it if you can think about it. How can you rewrite this? This is fantastic on its own, but how can you make it better? How can you make it even more donor friendly? Uh, this kind of a statement. If you can think of it, no pressure, try and uh, do it by the end of the webinar. The second thing that you need to remember in your annual report is present your work by team, not by projects. Uh, by that, I mean, you might have five donors. Usually sometimes what we end up doing is we say donor one, project, donor two, project, donor three, project. Uh, that is very confusing to a lay reader or a donor because uh, as an individual, I don't know who, what these donor names mean. Uh, I just need to know whether you're working to rescue animals, you're working on legal stuff. So thematically, when you arrange your work, then it really, I, I can form a picture in my head. Uh, for FIAPO, for example, our work, we, we uh, sort of arrange it as we work with farmed animals, we work with animals in captivity, and we work with um, companion animals. So when we arrange it like that, then the donor who is interested in any one particular area 
can jump to that and can actually access information that is of interest to them. So always present your work by theme and not project wise. The third thing is stories of change. Every annual report, every, this is not just annual report, every report, every newsletter should contain stories that we can tell. And our work is full of stories. So we need to find a way of telling these stories. Uh, right at the end of this presentation, there are some resources where um, there's one resource on storytelling that I would like you to look at. It's a link and we will send that to you later on. But it's really about how to look for these stories as you go about doing your work. A good story can not just, you know, we every day in my email, um, I get these stories of work that is being done by our staff and it completely inspires me. And, uh, you know, these stories not just inspire donors, they inspire, inspire you, you know, like to do your job better that day because someone in your team, in your office has done something remarkable that inspires you. So if it inspires you so much, then it should be able to inspire your donors even more. Um, and uh, there's, a te there's a saying in uh, fundraising that goes, people give to people and animal lovers give to animals. So we need to find stories of animals that have been helped of policies that have been changed uh, in favor of animals, of litigation that has helped create a better world or to achieve justice for animals. Uh, we need to tell these stories and we need to tell them to our donors. It's the only way in which donors can actually connect with our work. Donors don't connect with programs, they connect with stories. So use, find and use stories, use first person quotes. If you have volunteers, if you have activists, if you have um, uh, people who've adopted uh, animals, um, use quotes as much as possible. So some examples of these, uh, so for example, the one on the left is from the HSI annual report and it's an absolutely, uh, really a beautiful story about uh, the adoption of um, a dog called Juliet. And on the right, uh, it's, it's not a story really, but it's a statistic that is presented in a story-like way. Um, like often when we write our report, we assume that our donor knows what we are. When we say the word battery cages, we assume that people know what we are talking about, but people don't. We need to unpack what we are talking about to our donor. So for example, this uh, HSI, when they work uh, against fur, uh, fur factories and against the fur industry, they really want their donors to know what happens to the Arctic foxes whose fur is used in clothing. And so they have actually done this uh, to let, so this is actually a statistic, it's, uh, but they presented it in a way that people will actually understand. So use stories, use statistics well in your annual report. This is from again, Dogs Trust. Uh, their whole annual report is full of stories, by the way. So if you actually go and Google for Dogs Trust annual report, you will see lots of these kind of stories. Um, I do realize that uh, it's not always that we have direct animal stories like this. Sometimes it is uh, stories that where you found a you fought a long legal battle and uh, you've just made one step of progress, but you need to be able to tell that legal battle story in a way that your reader will understand. Um, some of our work is not always, you know, there isn't a happy puppy at the end of it. Uh, there's usually a, a, a high court judgment or there could be a policy, a shift, a, my, a very tiny shift in policy. But that tiny shift in policy represents years of people's work. So we need to be able to tell the story of what is it that we are doing that, and why that tiny shift in policy is so important. And all of those actually are stories. Um, this is again, Animal Aid Unlimited. 
and uh, they have really delightful stories on their annual report. So there are some elements, we've already seen some of the elements and you, you would have noticed this. This is not, of course, from an animal protection organization, but basically the common elements that put a good story together are you have either quotes, you have a good photograph and you have a good uh, header. And it, with these three things, um, you can bring a story together. And here is an example, um, again, from another nonprofit, which, is not, which has nothing to do with animals. But this is just an example of how an achievement, which is numeric, and a story, which is narrative, is used together. And something happens when you present a numerical achievement and a story together. If your donor is, a, is very left-brained, the donor relates to the achievement. If your donor is right-brained, the donor relates to the story. But usually donations happen uh, because there is some kind of a mixture of these. They want facts, but they want some uh, touchy-feely bit also. And there's a sweet spot in between achievements and stories. And that's where the donation happens. So in an, an annual report is a perfect place where you can actually put together quantitative and qualitative data, and you can bring them together in a way that persuades your donor to give. So that's really about the achievements and stories. Um, this is really uh, very important. The headlines that you write for different sections of the annual report have to be interesting. They have to draw. See, first we did this job where we selected a theme for the whole annual report. That had to be interesting and that had to draw the reader in. But once you read, uh, draw the reader in, you have to make sure that the reader keeps reading. And the way to do that is through headlines and subheaders. Um, this is just a tool that you can use. I use it a lot and uh, our teams here use them a lot. It's a headline analyzer that's for free. You can just see how many points it gets and you'll get to know whether your headline is good or not. The fifth part is financials. There is no lay donor on earth who really likes to read financials. So you have to simplify it for them. You have to make it easy to understand. And you can provide a, a link. Uh, if it's a PDF uh, annual report, you can provide a link to the complete audited statements on your website. But if it is uh, even a print, you can say, please visit our website for the complete audited statements. But most financials really have to be summarized like this. For example, here you see, we raised so much money, we spent so much money, we have so much money left over. This is the language that a lay donor really understands. Not those income and expenditure statements that uh, you know really most people don't have any appetite for. Uh, this is another example um, from Dogs Trust. This is where these are the donations that came in, where, I, where our money came from and where, how did we spend the money? The sixth point, sorry, I'm kind of racing through this. Am I speaking too fast, Tosi? No, no, no. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, so I will be done in a very short while. So um, definitely an annual report must have an ask, right? An appeal. Um, the, if your annual report has to be a fundraising tool, then you can't not ask for money. But most people, what they do at the end is put a note that says, please support us or please donate generously. Donors don't know what generously means. Your generously is very different from my generously and it's very different from Tosif's generously. So we need to define for the donor what generously means. You need to, we need to give them a specific amount uh, that, or better still, a uh, sort of a ladder uh, a menu list of three or four amounts uh, we must ask for that can uh, help you do X, Y, Z types of work. So for example, this. So here there's a whole ladder list right from 2,500 to quite a lot of money. So, um, you know, the, the idea is to give people 
various options. Um, and so that, and I'm in favor of using annual reports to sort of actually write an entire laundry list the way that you can't do on your website. On your website, you just can have two, three options. But in your annual report, you can actually present the entire vision. If you give us this much, we can do this much. If you give us more, we'll be able to do more. So this is very picturesque if you see the ask on the right. And it actually tells people what they can achieve with any donation amount of their choice. The seventh thing that you need to have is future plans in your annual report, because an annual report is used to raise funds for future work. If you see that these are three examples, and again, my favorite animal aid uh, on the left, where they have a, a section saying animal aid in the future, which talks about the work that they're planning to do in the coming year and the fact that they need money for that. Um, and they've outlined two or three. The same thing is in, in these things that you see on the right. These are just examples of, it can be a small paragraph, but you need to talk about what it is that you will be doing in the next year so that people can start thinking about supporting you. What do you think the most important two words on an annual report are? Any guesses, Tosif? I'll put you out of your misery. It's thank you. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, so you, you have to say thank you. And thank you is really the reason we are producing that annual report. You say thank you to donors, partners, volunteers. I would thank staff, donors, partners, volunteers, everyone. Um, and thank you is really, um, you can't have an annual report without these words. If thank you is the most important two words, then what is the one most important word? It's the word you. The annual report has to have the word you prominently in various places. Um, for example, this is an annual report that they've actually, they don't call it an annual report. They call it a gratitude report. And it says celebrating you. So it's very clear and they are profiling donors here. And the whole annual report is about the impact that people's support has had on their work. Um, look at this annual report, for example, the title of this, the theme that we were talking about. So the theme of this uh, report is stories of hope. And if you notice this little subheader here, it says written by you. Uh, so it's such a wonderful way of directly reaching out and getting the attention of your donor saying these are stories of hope that not us, but you wrote. Um, here, here is a story of change, which we've talked about a lot, uh, the story of change. And here, next to the story of change, they have written a little note. This story is made possible by these donors. Um, we may not all be able to do that, but if we could really acknowledge and honor donors in our annual report, it would just, really open up our fundraising. Um, and this is another example of how big the thank you is. And they put the thank you on their income and expenditure page. On their financial page, they have said thank you. Uh, so it's that important. Of course, the cover of the report is extremely important because it determines whether someone will open it or not. Um, and these are some examples of covers. And if you actually look at it, uh, look at the RSPCA one on the right uh, in blue, it says your year in review. It doesn't say FIAPO's year in review or RSPCA's year in review. It says your year in review. This is what you made possible. The other one, it says again, lives you helped change this year. So I really feel that, I think that point is made that the report for a fundraising annual report really puts the, shines the spotlight on the donor. So if you want to send a printed annual report to thousands of donors, you know, some of whom may be contributing 2000 rupees, 3000 rupees, 4000 rupees, what do you do? You can actually put your annual report on a postcard. So this is an annual report that we did on a postcard. And by that, I just mean it's really this slightly bigger, two sides of a postcard. 
And because it was this inexpensive, I mean, it was just this two sides of a sheet, uh, we were able to print uh, thousands of copies of this and send it to lots of people. So you can also do, a, a, if you can do a normal 16 page annual report, which you can only send to a few, like a few people digitally, whatever, but you can do a postcard annual report and send it to thousands of people. So that's really it. Um, I'm, I sort of galloped my way through this. Uh, so over to you, Tosif, and if anyone has any questions, I'll just un stop sharing. Yeah, 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 you can just stop yeah. the screen, yeah. Thank you, Bharati. You know you for taking us through the details of you know how annual reports play such a you know major crucial role in raising funds effectively. Uh, you know the, the points you've mentioned is of great value and obviously it's very insightful. So I'm sure uh, you know uh, our members will have questions to ask. So we'll, we'll just wait uh, and see if there are any questions. Would request everyone to you know okay vasanti kumar she said uh ready for a quiz what did it mean so you said that <laughs> yes yes <laughs> all right so by that i meant that there was a particular slide that um um which said that we admitted so many animals into our hospitals for treatment. Um, if you were to rewrite that in a way that appeals to a donor even more, how would you rewrite it? That was the quiz, really, which I didn't get the chance to ask because I was busy galloping through. Um, and the answer really is that instead of saying we admitted so many animals, you just say so many animals received treatment. They and they got because they below it says and they were vaccinated. So when you say so many animals received treatment, sterilization, vaccination, the focus is entirely on the animals. So the quiz really was not a quiz at all. It's a point that every sentence that we write, we need to shift the focus from our organization to the animals, uh, to the to those that we work for. That's all. All right. Uh, so we have one more questions. I mean, we have a couple of questions. So the next one it says, uh, is it good or unnecessary to share something about our team members in the report? Uh, I, I think it's a great idea to share something about team members in the annual report um, because it's the team that makes the work possible. Um, so I would actually say that uh, where it says donors, uh, I think the team is also uh, a kind of a donor because the team uh, gives much more than the eight hours a day that uh, people work. So I think it's very, very important. We might not have the space to, you know, put everyone's photo unless we can do it because these group photos, they have a way of not looking very good unless you can, you know, there's some event that happens and everyone is there and you don't want to leave people out. So if there is a way to acknowledge the team, uh, definitely thank the team, definitely thank all volunteers, definitely thank all um, uh, you know, activists, everyone that's associated, yes. All right. And uh, uh, the next question is, what is the best time to release an uh, annual report? Um, that really depends on when your, uh, your accounts get audited. Usually, um, if the financial year ends in, um, in March, our accounts should ideally, in an ideal world, be audited and ready by July. Uh, but that seldom happens. Usually, it becomes September. Um, and I think that's not too bad because September is when your festival season really starts, when people start to give money. So uh, I think it's not a bad idea to time your annual report before the start of the festival season so that you can ask for money. All right. 
uh, Vishal Kajuriash writes, uh, can we send annual report to the administration of a state like DC, uh, Deputy Commissioner, Chief Secretary, etc.? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Uh, there's one more question, Tosi. When should we yeah, ideally when should we start? start preparing the yeah, report? Yeah. So, <laughs> I think if your financial year ends in March and you hope to have it in um, in at least by September, start thinking about it in the first week of April, because trust me, it will take a long time for you know to plan the theme, to plan the numbers, to do it digitally or not, how many to print. Um, should we do two, two annual reports? Some organizations do two annual reports. They do like a 16 page and then they can do a postcard annual report. So you need time to plan all this budget. If you want some your bank to sponsor the printing, then you need to go approach the bank and say, we want you to sponsor. So I think in order to have, start planning from April onwards and it should, you should be good. All right. <clears throat> so uh, are there any more questions? From anyone? <clears throat> ah, software to help design an annual report? Is that what yes. uh, the question Yes, yes. Are there any softwares yes. for help? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you know, for small uh, NGOs, Canva is like a lifesaver. Because, uh, you know, I do, like, you don't, you, uh, you know, you can do pretty much everything. You can design your social media posts. You can do uh, even an annual report on using Canva. Uh, try not to do it on, uh, like, a Microsoft Word um, annual report. Because if you do it on Canva, Canva is, first of all, most of, uh, most of the features are free. And you don't need to be a designer to be, they have templates and there are many, many pages that are available for free. You can design entire reports on Canva. So I would suggest get something like, um, try it. It's C-A-N-V-A, canva.com. I can put it in the chat box. Oh, yeah, that'll be great. Oh, sorry, I've sent it to hosts and panelists, I think. <laughs> hey, let's put it there. Everyone. Yeah. Okay. okay, yeah. Mm. Okay, Darshan Desai writes How much should we uh, spend to decide the volume of printing of the report? How much should we spend? Spend to decide um, the volume. So, it all depends on how many uh, donors you have. If you have, um, say, mostly institutional donors, um, you can do, uh, you know, all of them definitely you can send a print copy unless they prefer a, 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 a PDF copy. But for donors, individual donors like to receive something in hand, there is a postage cost there. And there is, so we have to keep that in mind. There's a postage cost there and there is a printing cost there. But I have had experience in the past of um, getting that sponsored. So how much should be spent? You can actually spend, uh, I think the local bank manager has an authority to approve about 20,000 worth of donation for print sponsorship of printing or something like that. I mean, I'm not very sure, but you can find out. Each bank might have different, but whichever bank you have where your accounts are, just find out what is the signing authority of the bank manager and how much they can give. And that can be your starting. You can say, okay, if they give 25,000 rupees, we can actually use that to print. You can use that as one milestone. Uh, as one guiding uh, light. The other thing is that you might say that no, even someone who gives me 300 rupees will get a, um, will get an annual report, but we'll do it in the form of a postcard or a four page, like I was saying, you know, just a four page annual report. So these things can be done. So it all depends. 
but i would actually say for donors it's good to give them something that uh, um they can hold in their hands <clears throat> all right i think yeah those are all the questions so uh, yeah so i mean if uh, anyone has any more questions you can always reach out to us at you know later at any point of time uh so i think yeah, we are good to you know in this session uh, i i guess we we ended sharp at 6 pm <laughs> yeah so yeah thank you thank you everyone you know Thanks for so you know, much, participating everyone. for sharing the questions thank you bharti and thank you for doing this session it was really really informative and really wonderful thank you so much everyone all right okay thanks all right thank you so much so